Okay, last quick reminder. What do we need to know about the activity series about section 24 of the data booklet for paper one? They're not going to expect you to remember everything, but they do expect you to be able to make connections with periodic trends because some of these reactions are actually part of the periodic trends topic, and then it's a nice link and connection to the redox topic. So from section 24, you should know that your reducing agents are up here, and reducing agents are usually metals, and you should know that your strong oxidizing agents are down here, and so you should associate that with nonmetals. Reducing agents cause reduction by giving away electrons, that's why they're metals, and oxidizing agents steal electrons, that's why nonmetals are good oxidizing agents. And it shouldn't be that hard to remember that fluorine, the most electronegative element, is the strongest oxidizing agent in table 24. And you're expected to know trends about group 17, the halogens, and therefore you just have to rank your halogens in ascending order because that way they get less and less electronegative. They also get less and less strong as oxidizing agents. You put their ions over here, and now you can answer any question about halide ions reacting with halogens. For example, uh, what can bromide ions react spontaneously with? Well, they will react spontaneously with chlorine, and they'll react spontaneously with fluorine because those are beneath it on the activity series, but it would have a no reaction with iodine because iodide, iodine is higher than it on the activity series. So you should be able to rank group 17 into its appropriate spots uh, in table 24 in the activity series. In terms of electrolysis and redox, you should try to remember that oxygen, the production of oxygen from water's oxidation, this is an HL topic, is right near that of chlorine forming because we know that there's this chlorine exception where chlorine forms instead of oxygen, even though it goes against our kind of general rules of section 24. So it shouldn't be that hard to remember that O2 is right near chlorine. And so that means that in electrolysis, bromine and iodine are both more likely to form than oxygen, and chlorine and fluorine are less likely to form than oxygen. But chlorine will form if it's at high concentration. Now on the other top end of the table, what general stuff do we have to know? Well, we should try to remember that alkali metals, group one metals, and then also group two are very reactive. So it doesn't even matter if you remember the exact order, but things like lithium, sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, those are the most reactive metals, even things like aluminum. Those are gonna be uh, at the top and their ions and such are gonna be over here. And beneath those is where we have water's reduction, forming hydrogen, again, for an HL topic. Now, beneath water's reduction are the nice stable metals. Things like copper is probably the most common that they like to use, and silver, actually silver is way down here. But for our purposes in this, for like paper one, you just wanna know that it's lower than uh, the production of hydrogen. So. When we do electrolysis topics uh, for HL, and you're thinking about that non-spontaneous C, so you're gonna be looking for oxidation at the bottom and reduction half equations at the top, and this is the direction, uh, the forced um, electron transfer goes energetically uphill. Now, when you have a couple that you're picking between, you always wanna pick the skinnier C. The skinnier C, non-spontaneous C, is the one that is ends up being smaller, delta G positive. And that means even though it's still non-spontaneous, it is less non-spontaneous. So the smaller the positive delta G, the better. And so of these choices that I've drawn here, I would pick the higher up oxidation and I would pick the lower down reduction. That's going to give me the smallest positive delta G between these two, rather than the ones on the outside. So for example, uh, if they give me a solution that is uh, copper fluoride, again, this is HL electrolysis, I know metal cat, so at the cathode, I might make copper, I might make hydrogen. At the anode, 
I might make my non-metal, which is fluorine, or I might make oxygen. Well, I can remember that group one is at the top, group one and two, then I've got hydrogen, and then I've got copper somewhere down here beneath hydrogen. So the skinniest option is that I make copper. On this side, I've got fluorine, which is at the very bottom, and then I've got oxygen somewhere above that. So oxygen is my skinnier option. It brings me closer to the middle of the table. So the products that I'll make at each electrode are copper and oxygen. Um, if it was something like potassium and bromine, then my metal is potassium at the cathode or hydrogen. Well, I know I'm not gonna make potassium because it's a group one metal. I'm more likely to make hydrogen. At this side, I might make bromine. I might make oxygen. I've got to think for a second and, okay, here's fluorine, here's chlorine, here's bromine. Um, and I know O2 is right around chlorine. So fluorine is less likely to be formed because it's more extreme. Bromine gives my skinnier option of, uh, of my two nonmetals. And so the two products that I would make in this one are hydrogen at the cathode and bromine at the anode. So if you can remember things like metal cat, you can remember where you make hydrogen and oxygen, and you can remember some general rules about group one and two, group 17, and where the water oxidation and reductions fit in, uh, then you will be well prepared for paper one questions about this.